right, and we are live. Just checking the sound. Uh, I also get a lot of uh, kind of background noise. We're gonna make sure that it's not too noisy. But uh, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Welcome to the 62nd uh, episode of the the Korea podcast. Once upon the Hug One Startup Podcast, I've got Joe McPherson. McPherson, is that right? Is that do I pronounce it correctly? McPherson, sorry, McPherson, uh, with us here tonight, uh, the founder of Zen Kimchi, and turns out that almost, almost the very first blogger in in South Korea, the food blogger, <laughs> which is phenomenal. Oh yeah, the marmot, that's right. I lost Nomad. I I remember that there was the marmot hole, right? Did you did you like were you in contact with all these fellas running these things? Yeah. Oh, Yeah, it's interesting. It's it's interesting to hear stuff like that because uh, when I came here in two thousand, I, I, I came in two thousand five. Um, I was here for three years, uh, two years, and then I left. Came back in two thousand ten. And within the short period of only two years, like the entire scene seems seem to have changed. The country has changed, you know, like it took only two years and things were different. Um, but I remember when I first arrived in Ulsan, um, you you know, you'd, you would bump into people on the street um, and we'd, we'd either say hi to each other because, you know, I didn't know who that person is, who that non-Korean person was or we'd say hello because I didn't know who that person was so <laughs> either way whenever you saw an expat on the street uh, you'd, you'd always greet each other right and right now yeah and right now you just don't even acknowledge each other's presence anymore so that's that's kind of sad and I, I don't know or well, maybe good because it's a bit <laughs> yeah right hmm <laughs> uh, today is the 27th of uh, April. Uh, the Korea podcast was off last week because um, we reopened our Shane School after the, the Corona break um, and it was just chaos and madness and I had no time. I didn't upload any videos. I've, I've managed to shoot a couple. Uh, I wasn't able to edit them uh, because we're running from like 7 a.m. I basically I wake up at 7 a.m. I'm here at 8 a.m. and I leave past week midnight. Like that was my day. I, I woke up, I would come to work, I would eat breakfast, I would eat dinner, and then I would go back home to sleep. That was my week last week. A <laughs> week. Basically <laughs> with very, very few customers in it, you know. <laughs> so so I had no time to do anything. And so we're back online today. Um, and the Korea podcast is, uh, well, it's about life in South Korea um, and running a business in South Korea, which is very befitting to have Joe online here today because he's a veteran in that area. Um, I posted, I, I took the intro from your LinkedIn account and I posted it underneath the video. 
that, oh, that was probably yourself or whoever wrote the intro for you on LinkedIn, man. <laughs> it's, it is an impressive uh, uh, resume. Yeah, you, you did all that. <laughs> you did all that. So, so maybe let's start from the beginning. Um, your, your LinkedIn account says something about you arriving or starting Zen Kimchi in 2004. Okay. Mm. <laughs> wow, okay. Right. looking at other blogs and and I had discovered food blogs and I was looking for a food blog for Korea and I only found one but it already had been discontinued and so I decided to make a food blog because no one else is doing one and and just kind of keep a record of all the stuff I was eating because most of my blog posts were about food anyway right that's how it started Okay, so just to recap, because apparently I had you tuned down. <laughs> I heard it all. You're good. So what Joe basically uh, said now was that he started his vlog on the plane. Um, in 2004, he hopped on the plane and he started basically creating the whole thing on the plane. So by the time you landed, you had your thing going, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I was programming it myself. Right. Okay. Um, so we've got, there's, uh, there, there, uh, oh, okay. there's one person in the chat. Um, and he's saying that he couldn't hear us, but hopefully, okay now. Fantastic. No, Wonderful. <laughs> How come I can hear your voice? I assume we're on now. Uh, I just said you tuned out before earlier, so we're good. Okay. Um, so, uh, McPherson is, it's a, it's a Scottish name, right? It's Scottish. Scottish. Yeah, it's Scottish. Yeah. Well, from Scotland, are you? No, never been. I've been no. to England. I've been to oh, those bastards. I've been to England. <laughs> uh, not been to uh, God's country. I've not been to Scotland yet. Um, oh, you got to make your way down there, man. I think I do. I do. I've. I've. I had to. I had. You know. You know. You know how maybe like uh, Korean Americans feel like I. I'm not Korean unless I make my own kimchi. I need to do this. <laughs> so I felt this need one time to make my own haggis. Right. And I did it with ingredients I got from the international market in Itaewon, because I mean, um, you know, they I, I I saw lamb kidneys. You I rarely see lamb kidneys even in America. I'm like, mm. I gotta get this. And I'm like, what can I do with lamb kidneys? I can make haggis. <laughs> I'd never had haggis before, so I was looking up online things and ways to make haggis, mm. and lamb kidneys, and on and it, I had lamb liver hearts and everything. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this story. And also back then, I had to get oats. And back then, oats were really hard to find in Korea. Right. And uh, I had to purify the kidneys by boiling them. Oh, my God. Have you ever have you ever dealt with kidneys before? Um, well, just chicken ones. I think they're small. and you, But I could imagine that the smell during the I've boiling is... Bidden for ever doing this again. For a week, our house smelled like a urinal. Right. <laughs> I had the doors open and everything, and none of it helped. It was nasty. Um, so on that topic, um, so in um, my background is from Poland. Uh, uh, I immigrated with my parents a long time ago. We we moved uh, around. We ended up in Canada. 
Um, so in Poland, there is this thing called blood sausage. Blutwurst. Uh, sorry? Blutwurst. Well, I lived in Germany for a oh, while. Okay, yeah, Blutwurst. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they got yeah. that in Germany. So it seems like it's a common trend all across Europe, just eating bloody freaking semi-processed meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so there is, you know, Korea's got its, um, what do you call it? Sunde. Sunde, exactly, Sunde. How different is haggis from Sunde, I guess? Because Sunde is pretty familiar to people who are living in Korea. How, how would you compare Sunde? Um, now, to... now, the only haggis I've ever had was this train wreck that I made at my house. Right. And, and I actually turned it into a shepherd's pie, <laughs> which, which was, I posted online and all the Scottish people were going, that's sacrilege. How dare you do that? <laughs> It was delicious, though. Is it? Yeah. yeah, it's more like a. To me, it's more like a meatloaf. <laughs> it tasted. So, but it did like what, very peppery meatloaf. What kind of ingredients do you throw into that stuff? Gosh, what was it? It's just think of any lamb innards you could think of that you can get. Um, if it's lamb, you wouldn't use. Uh, yeah. It was, no, I was using lamb and uh, mixed it with oats and whiskey. Uh, and formed it basically i just formed it into a loaf and you boil it now usually you're traditionally supposed to boil it in a sheep's stomach i didn't have a sheep's stomach on hand mm, so i just right. i just i just think i just put it in a plastic bag and boiled it that's so that sounds so tasty <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was it was good it was edible it, it was i liked it it was super rich it was only a dab will do you you just eat like three spoonfuls of this and you're like okay i'm bloated for a week yeah, I'd be stoked. Um, I, I've I've been considering kind of trying my hand at making, you know, Polish sausages here. Um, but you need time for that. You need, you know, a lot of that stuff is smoked. So you need like a smoke I was going to say that. You need a smoker for yeah, some Yeah, you kilt. need a smoke shack somewhere and preferably with, you know, good quality wood to give it that, that smoky flavor. Yeah, right? <laughs> so. yeah, right now. Yeah, and uh, getting good quality wood... It's a little difficult. It's possible. I've run two barbecue operations mm. in Korea, and sourcing wood is a bit of a challenge. In yeah. Korea, right. I can yeah. imagine. A lot of people use oak, and oak, a friend of mine said, that's the vodka of woods. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it'll it'll get you there, but it doesn't have much character. Right. Compared to, now I like to use a mix of applewood and hickory, but um, yeah, what would you use for Polish sausage? Uh, pork mainly, but I mean, there's no, like but what, a, what type of wood? Do oh, you know I have no wood? idea. I wouldn't even know. <laughs> uh, but I know, like I looked online and you can, you can Google it. Um, there are, there is a, uh, a community of, you know, of, of traditional, uh, Polish, Polish butchers. And so you could find whole recipes of the different types of, um, herbs that are included, that are added to the meat, into the mixture. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you know, pig's stomach, you, you stuff into the intestines, you mix up the meat with the, with the, the herbs, you just shove it into the intestines or whatever, and let it, you know, hang for, I don't know how, how many hours to smoke. I'm sure everyone is enjoying this. They all came out here to listen to us <laughs> talking about innards, stuffing innards and innards. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's, let's, <laughs> let's retrace our steps. Here. Yeah. We were on the plane and you were leaving. <laughs> You're f so oh you're, yeah you're yeah. you're from the states right 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 okay right. so did you when you left the states was that your first like were you coming to Korea with the goal of you know I'm gonna start a blog or a vlog and no. I'm gonna be you know zippity doo what was your goal why 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 were you aiming for Korea well it was just a lot of things lined up I mm -hmm. uh, at university I I. I fell into studying Korean history. Um, the real story was I needed the credits, and that would that that course was open at the time. But when then I took it, and I got really surprised me about how just crazy awesome Korean history is. Well, it's I call it it's like Game of Thrones in Asia. Mm. It's it's so full of intrigue and violence. Um, in fact, I'm I'm reading a um, a newer book about Korean history written by two Korean scholar uh, two. Korean Korean scholars mm. about the Chosen Dynasty and um, the first 200 years. I've gotten through the first 200 years. I think maybe three people in this history have died a natural death. Mm. <laughs> it's, Everybody it, else. It, it gruesome deaths too. <laughs> it's 
dismemberments. It's just gruesome. And so I really got into Korea. I got really, I got, uh, I wouldn't say obsessed, like Korea boo obsessed, but mm. I was more interested. I wasn't interested in the K-pop or anything. I was more interested in traditional things like, um, uh, 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 myths and folklore. Right. Uh, I was really in, more into that. And, uh, I, after I graduated, uh, I went straight I went straight, try to make my fortune in the IT industry mm-hmm. and that's when the dot-com bubble burst. So, um, I thought, okay, all signs are pointing to going to Korea for a bit. <laughs> I had, I had a friend that was teaching here and she loved right. it and I was like, okay, okay, let's try this. Let's try this. And I was, I was planning on just coming here for a year, yeah. but no, after that first year, I, I liked it better. Uh, I, I just, I didn't want to go back. Um, I had healthcare. Right. So you did come here with the idea of basically like a, most of us teaching English, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, what do you call an American rocket scientist in Korea? Hmm. English teacher. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only job you can get. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I came here as an English teacher, uh, and I, I think everyone teaches English. I've, I've, I know people who own businesses, and they still teach English on the side. They own pubs, they own import companies, and they still teach English. Everyone teaches English. Just because it's extra income or just to kill time? It's, it's a fallback. It's a fallback, and it supplements your income. I still teach English. Uh, it's, it's, something that, it's something that's kind of something that it's steady. Hmm. It's interesting. I actually, uh, it, so one of the videos I recorded just this past week during my lull and like a very quick was, uh, is because the last video I published was, um, five reasons why I dislike living in Korea. Um, uh-huh. and, and the, the thumbnail title was hate Korea, which kind of drew quite a bit of criticism. Um, yeah. it just, but it wasn't meant to be hate Korea. It just fitted better in a thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So, uh, but uh, a bunch of subscribers asked me uh, whether there were any things that I enjoyed about Korea. So I made a video listing the five things why I like living in Korea. Yeah, I was um, hoping you balanced it out. Yeah, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many, right? But you know, yeah, you, you gotta keep. Everyone it does that. Yeah. Everyone does that. I mean, yeah. the, the, you're, you're a zombie if, if you think everything is always so exactly. perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> so one of the reasons is the whole idea of. You know, still being after so many years of English being taught here as as a second language, you know, and people making money off of it, it's still um, people are still able to make a decent living doing that after so many years, right? Yeah, yeah. Except during coronavirus, but yeah, right. Except during that time, unless of course you you have a, you have an online presence, right? During coronavirus, yeah. everything. Yeah, goes yeah. One of one of my one of my friends is doing the online teaching, and I'm tempted to do it, but. Uh, it is a lot more, it, uh, it's a lot more time, not time consuming, but, um, uh, it doesn't pay it's intensive lot- and it, you don't, you don't get paid as much for your, but for your work, your trouble. It's yeah. basically, it's just not it's slightly above minimum wage. I find it to like, it re- requires a lot more focus, you know, cause you're, if your classes are 20 minutes or 30 minutes and anybody who can do it for longer than 20, 30 minutes at a time, holy moly, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, 30 minutes, I've, I've done some 30 minute blocks and just, it feels extremely intense. Like you're just focused on that one student. Um, and if you had, you know, seven oh, blocks yeah. back to well, back. Oh yeah. One-on-ones are rough. Yeah. Any type like, of tutoring is tough too. Yeah. Anytime you have one-on-ones, I worked for this hog one once and they're always struggling and they just wanted to put kids in a classroom no matter what. Mm. And I'd be stuck in classes with just one kid who didn't want to be there. <laughs> And didn't speak anything, didn't even speak Korean, wouldn't even speak Korean. And um, I got away with this one kid who was just tired all the time. He didn't want to speak. So um, I just let him take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to go. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I think I thought, I think he got more out of it by getting that, that sleep time in. Mm-hmm. I think that might have helped his studies in the long term. <laughs> he needed that. I, I have that. I mean, you, you have kids ever fall asleep in your classes? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Uh, and occasionally I just let them snooze. Uh, yeah. I, these days I just let them snooze. That's what I do. I was like, yeah. you need this more than you need to learn the passive aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, 
I think uh, I used to get a lot of these students in university as well. Oh, well, university, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's a whole different thing. Okay, so uh, what was the next thing for you? After arriving here, you started your blog. Uh, how yeah, was that going, actually? That was good. I mean, it was just something to do on the side. Something It was an outlet, creative outlet, because I always mm -hmm. need to have one. Um, and it, it wasn't meant to make money. It was just something just to keep my focus mm -hmm. going. I just need that. I always need some type of project I'm doing to keep my sanity. Because if my life was just about teaching English during the day and going to the wall bar at night. Yeah. That, that was just a waste of a life for me. Sure. So I just needed to be doing something. And, and so I was just plugging away and it was, it really was, I mean, back in those, those days, it, there, the blogs were digital cameras were expensive. So a lot of those had to be wordy or, and when I did have pictures, they were tiny and mm. really badly taken. Um, and then early 2007, uh, I got a email from the New York times, and they wanted they were doing an article about the new popularity of Korean fried chicken in New York City. Mm. And they wanted to interview me about it because they I mean they did they couldn't find any experts to talk about it. <laughs> right. so my blog. And um talked to me and we talked for a good long time. It was fun. And uh then the article came out and and, and Zen Kimchi was just all over that article and the the, the blog blew up after that. Mm. And after that I started getting uh, more interviews. I started becoming more of a um, go-to person, a connection right. inside the country. Uh, usually, it help, I usually just help people uh, with their articles. Uh, I don't get credit for it, but a lot of articles that came about Korean food, usually that was kind of a ghost source for mm -hmm. a lot of them. And then uh, later, uh, uh, TV projects started coming in, so I was helping with TV projects. Right. And it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, and that was fun because I during that doing that I got to be you know I usually usually was not on TV but I was in the background and I got to meet a lot of uh, of my heroes and that was really fun. Nice. Uh, how? Um, oh, sorry. Just to, there's a subscriber, not subscriber. I think it's Kenta, my buddy. Speaking of sausages, I miss Bangus. What's Bangus? And sausages. May with bangers, pig. maybe. I'm thinking bangers. Bangers. With pig's ears. Mm. Okay, yeah, with pig's ear at a pub. Mm, my type of person. <laughs> my type of person. I don't know. Pig's ears. Love it. Mm. So, uh, okay, what are you doing right now? Like, uh, so, so we were just talking before the podcast here, um, and, and I was just mentioning that I was flipping through Joe's Inst uh, LinkedIn page um, profile, and I uh, stumbled up upon some of the videos that are posted on your profile. Um, uh -huh. And in one of them, there was a mention of uh, Soul, the Soul podcast. And I, I realized that, Joe, you just posted a short little introduction to like reinvigorate the podcast um, a couple of weeks ago, and it clicked mm. in. So um, other than, than your, the website, Zen Kimchi website, um, mm. what else are you doing right now? Well, um, let's see. I run a tour company. Uh, I, we do food tours, hiking tours, and we run the Dark Side of Soul Ghost Tour. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, let's see. Uh, so I, I have. We started the Soul Podcast in two thousand eight, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it, that ran for a few years. And then, then of course, my my co host went scattered to the four winds. I got married and had a baby, and you know how that works. And you know, Eric keeps going. <laughs> Oh, it's like working out. It's like, uh, oh, uh, I have an excuse. I'll skip today. Yeah. And then I skip, you skip the next week. And then, right. then before you know it, you stop doing it. And right. I still kept, I still kept, uh, my social media for the soul podcast alive. Cause like one day I might find a way to fit it into my routine again. And, right. and now I'm trying to, the coronavirus has spurred me to get back and put it in my routine. So I've been trying to revive the soul podcast. This time it has video, uh, I've been experimenting with um, some short news segments, maybe some short like uh, daily show style comedy news. That's hard. Comedies doing trying to do comedies hard. Yeah, uh, 
I always wanted to yeah. be funny. I just could never pull it off, man. I'm more of the angry type guy. <laughs> yeah, I've given. See, that's it. I used to be that. I'm trying to not be that way anymore. I, I, I listen to my old podcast, and I'm so embarrassed by how angry I was. Really? And yeah. I, I'm, these days, I'm kind of like, chill out, dude. <laughs> that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I've re, I'm trying to revive the Soul Podcast at soulpodcast.com mm. and also on Twitter at, at King Sejong. Mm. And uh, we also create a podcast for the dark side of soul. And that's been fun too. So Sean, my my other guide, Sean and I, he's a folklorist and uh, we talk about gosh, it's um just just all those things people just want to hear about that no one's talking about in Korea. I mean, yeah, my thing is ghost stories and dark history. And then we also throw in uh, lots of true crime mm -hmm. in there. Uh, last night we just recorded the most the most difficult show for me to do was on missing pre persons. And that was emotionally very rough for me. Mm. Um, but th these are the types of uh, content that no one – no one's talking about this. And no. Well, Korea kind of likes things kind of sugar-coated for the most part, right? Yeah. So people like these things. Like, you know, when you go online uh, and just do a quick Google search, uh, basically, like, the last quick Google search on the dark side of Korea that I did, you came up as one of the, like, the only, basically, dark side of Korea hit. <laughs> there is nothing. Hey, SEO. You know? Hey, but that's what it is. That's all it was. Way back in the day, if you so you typed Korean food, mm. Zin Kimchi was the first yeah. thing to pull up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's what it is. And we're covering in this niche, and it's and we just feel like there's a need for other stuff. We 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 show our passion for Korea, but also not this sterilized Korea boo stuff. Uh, uh, it, we just, we, it's a little more of a, a how to say it? A little, and I wouldn't say cynical take. No, cynical. I hate cynical takes. It's, it's a little more of a, a, a sassy take on Korea. Hmm. Well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? No, it's not bad because it, it's also, it's just showing a, a, a different type of passion. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just blindly just going, oh my God. God, yeah. Did you did you watch this K drama last night? Even though we did, we did a, a soul podcast <laughs> all about one of the K dramas, which was really good. Mm. I I I stay away from Korean drama, Korean TV. My Korean I did too until I saw this one, and it was I was surprised I got into it, and I watched it from beginning to end. I'm like, okay, I've lived here too long. I. <laughs> I, my Korean is not it. good enough to watch TV, so like I literally just I don't I'm disconnected uh, <laughs> from yeah, from good, that. Good. Yeah, I feed on YouTube, um, and and people basically complain. Like when I look at YouTubers, you know, in Korea, yeah, it, most YouTubers are. Uh, somebody mentioned, somebody commented on my last video saying, because it was kind of along the same lines, the same monotonous stuff, you know, people you always list the five good things, the five bad things. There is not, not, not a lot of variety when it comes to uh, YouTubers making stuff here in South Korea. It's usually yeah. younger uh, folks, um, you know, kind of vlogging their life or their apartments or stuff. Or, or, it's, uh, or it's people just trying to become famous. Yeah. Uh, and uh and okay there's 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 an angle wow this is my this is where i'm griping i'm trying not to gripe especially about fellow youtubers and podcasters but there's a there's a section i hate and it's, it's usually done in the korean media but then the korea booze will do this too is is they infantilize their audience mm. they treat them like babies right infants and and when they start doing this do you know tukboki uh, this type <laughs> of stuff uh, let me introduce you. Oh my God! The word "introduce" sogehad sogehada. Yeah. It, it oh, it's just used for everything, and it just drives me crazy. It's like, <laughs> oh, it's 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 um, I get I get really tired of that, and 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 the 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 YouTubers that feel like they need to introduce foreigners mm. to Korean food. People living in Korea is like, I mean, if you live in Korea, most of what you eat is Korean food. Right. You don't need someone introducing you to this. It's like, it's like introducing someone to water. Yeah, exactly. 
Here you hear me gripe. Oh my gosh. It's fine. I think it's a big part of living in Korea, man. You, you can't, you know, <laughs> there's so many things. That, I do it all the time. It's what grinds my it. gears is, is um, just a couple of weeks ago, I took my kids to a neighborhood we used to live in. So we, we lived in this neighborhood and then we moved to our present location in order to open our school. Um, mm -hmm. And so my son was born and kind of spent the first two or three years of his tiny little life in the other neighborhood. And he, mm -hmm. he wants to go back there. He wants to go back there for, you know, Aww. the playgrounds and this and that. He's kind of got this nostalgic yes. bond with that, you know, with that place. Yes. I'm not very keen on it because it's a tiny neighborhood. And I'm like, we're leaving this place. We'll come back to it if you want to, you know, to, so you can play it. But we're not living here because <laughs> it's very limiting. Um, yeah. But so, you know, when you, we went there, we were sitting on swings and these kids came out and literally they stood in front of us and gaped. They were like, their mouths fell open. Oh, they're doing that. I'm like, um, are you serious? Yeah. It's 2020. You guys live in a city that's like full of foreigners and still in this tiny little neighborhood, you get this, you know? So. Uh, it hasn't happened to me in a while, but yeah. Yeah, the, the same the here. I had to go back there and it, it does happen. But every time it does happen, I'm, you know, my mind goes, why? Why does it, it still yeah, happen? Also, <laughs> when I go to touristy places like mm. the palace or um, years ago, yeah, I took my daughter to an amusement park and we're trying to eat. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to eat dinner at the park at the amusement park and this girl just stands next to us at the table with her mouth open uh, <laughs> uh like yeah. can we can he help you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's that but um you know okay with the covid19 i've actually been trying my best to stay inside as much as possible i only leave the house if i need to run in here and like get groceries or if I have a specific meeting I have to go to. And so uh, tonight was the first time my family, we just went out to a restaurant mm -hmm. to just enjoy ourselves. And there's this wonderful chicken that's come out in recent years called Nudingji Tondak. Okay. And it's this wood roasted chicken, mm -hmm. like roasted over wood, so it's smoky. And then it's butterflied and served on top of a platter of crispy sizzling rice. And it's served with this sweet wasabi mustard. It's just addictive. It's <laughs> so good. So I was convincing my wife, because I do this on uh, this one of the stops on, on our chicken and beer tour. And I was trying to convince my wife to try this out. You said, you got to try this. And then during the coronavirus, she actually has time to listen to me when I talk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And so I convinced her about this Nerdingty Tone Doc, and I showed her pictures of this. And it just, I planted the seed in her head. She just got obsessed with this stuff. And then she just, she told our daughter about it. And so she said, today, she said, I told Gian about it, and we just really want to go. I'm like, why don't we go? Why don't we go today? I found one close to us in our neighborhood. We drove all the way out there, and. Uh, enjoyed it is just as good as it is anywhere else. It's just glorious. They just tore into it. They just loved it. And uh, but for me, I was just so happy to be outside and to <laughs> see people I have never seen before in my life, strangers. Right. To see strangers, and it was just fascinating to me. I was like, and just driving in Korea and just looking, I was like. I love this place. I missed it. I said that. I said that to my daughter. I said, I missed Korea so much. And she's like, what are you talking about? You've always been here. <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck in a house. <laughs> but Korea being outside, I missed it so much. I missed this country. I missed this food and these people and this, these conversations and this energy and this excitement. I missed it. <laughs> So much. I was just about to cry. I just <laughs> so happy to be here. Um, this has been this whole thing has been made me very proud to be in Korea to the point that my family's calling me uh, cocky, arrogant son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to stop doing that. Uh, I, I had to be quiet of the yay, yay, Korea, America, you, you should be ashamed hmm. type of <laughs> talk. Yeah. I just Gotta hope that uh, people kind of get over it quicker. Um, and I'm worried. I'm so worried. I'm so worried. We just mailed. You never thought this. We mailed masks to my family back in, in the, the U.S. <clears throat> yeah, <throat> we are giving aid 
medical aid to our poor third world nation <laughs> our families stuck i mean this is this i really do feel like a migrant worker now I'm, and that's good uh, i feel like i i came to a, a more developed country in some ways yeah <laughs> but, yeah uh, i feel like colin marshall just came out with a very similar opinion piece in the new yorker uh today mm. uh saying that talking about that it's like yeah uh, uh feels like I migrated to from a third world country to a first world country. It feels like that here. And, and, and people in America just didn't, you know, friends at home, just like, how is that possible? You know, we're, we're the best at everything. And then this happens and it kind of exposed. The, it, it, it was, yeah. it was it's, it's the purple dye that was injected and in, under the, the, to show the cancer, you know, it's like, Ooh, we yeah. see what, there the whole time. I've I've seen a few posts from from you know Americans saying that pretty much the same thing. Like, oh, I thought America is great, but it turns out that it's not as perfect. Um, and I think a lot of it comes from like the reliance. This is kind of a kicker, you know. The world relies on China uh, to produce stuff, um, and now China's. I, I think I saw a post. I don't know from the Netherlands or something. Netherlands was rejecting, you know thousands of masks that were shipped to net to the Netherlands from China mm, because yeah. the products were you know they were not they were shoddy they were shoddy, shoddy. I mean, they were I've, been, I've been I've seen that yeah. I've been seeing a few posts like that uh, not only Netherlands other places Canada I think it was rejected a bunch of them yeah well I mean I think most of the most of the countries uh, all across the world you know import stuff from China they they you know they they moved their factories to China um, all the labor is outsourced now to China. China's producing <laughs> like half or more of the supplies of the global supplies of everything. Um, and now people are complaining that stuff is crap and China's taking the piss. <laughs> They're like, yeah, you know, I mean, China does. Okay. Yeah, uh, why am I, why am I put in this position? <laughs> now China makes some good stuff though. <laughs> China <laughs> does make some good stuff. Yeah, they do. But uh, I think it's individual Xiaomi, companies. Xiaomi products are pretty good. Top notch in my oh, opinion. Absolutely. Like I use Xiaomi's two the new Xiaomi Samsung. Things. I, mean, I got, I got, I got my, 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 my me fit, my fit band, uh, -huh. uh very cool device and so inexpensive and it's so funny because it's it's a it's a fitness band yeah and it's competing with fitbit and it, it feels like when uh samsung was coming out first coming out with smartphones well still is coming out with smartphones competing mm. with apple mm. is the the samsung's when apple comes out with a new phone and they keep touting the new features of this new iphone and we're like Samsung came out with that two years ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Already did. And I'm feeling the same thing with the Xiaomi bands is uh, Fitbit will come announce this new band that's like $200. Mm. I'm like, we are I already got that on my Mi Fit band for, for 30 bucks. Right. <laughs> like, what? We already have that. Uh, touch screen, color touch screens. Uh, I can control my music from my band, you know, things like that. Oh, I agree. Um, I use a DJI. version that's voice activated too, but I it's only in Chinese. DJI products uh, and like the GoPro for the longest time was uh, the biggest hit, I guess, right? Um, yeah. And then DJI released the Osmo um, Action and I picked it up because it's got a front screen and a back screen, which Ooh. means, you know, if you're vlogging or something, if you're recording yourself, you can switch screens and basically see yourself, whereas the GoPro does yeah. not have that. And I no, mean, that's for people attaching things to their bikes. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and so this uh, Osmo Action, is, it's, it's the first generation thing that was produced by DJI. And it's a, it's a really good camera. It's a solid camera. I dropped it several times, still functioning very well. It's waterproof, so you don't need to buy Butter another fingers. case. Sorry? Butterfingers. Butterfingers, yeah, totally. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's waterproof so you don't need to buy another case like gopro needs to have you know 15 different things added to it before you actually take it underwater this thing you can just throw it in the water like take it out of the package and put it in yeah. the water and it, it goes so you know? so, so yeah. I, i'm just saying not it don't i don't yeah there are some good things that come out of china yeah yeah of course but, but a lot of commodities <laughs> a lot of commodities yeah are crap uh, um my wife keeps telling me to stop buying. Okay, so this is my my one shopping addiction I have is AliExpress. Yeah, I use that as well. I'm all 
just for fun sometimes i just go on there and i just and there's always something on there i'm like ooh it's not really that much money i should get it no they get a lot of stuff that you probably shouldn't man because you could spend there hours and hours and end up broke with all those gadgets that they have there's a lot of crap i there is. i mean there's there's a lot of stuff i that goes straight in the trash yeah <laughs> But it looks so cool on there. Or, or always be careful about AliExpress. Is look at the measurements on the thing. Something you think that's going to be this big is yeah, yeah. tiny, size of your thumb. <laughs> to be honest, I've like I've purchased a lot of stuff from AliExpress, and only once um, did I purchase shoes. I was looking for shoes, oh, and I got I was about a pair to of shoes. Mention that. Yes, and like literally, the shoes did look nothing. Didn't look anything like the stuff, like the picture. And oh, I really? basically opened a, discla- uh, a claim, um, and the the person selling the shoes didn't want to take them back. But I eventually, you know, ended up getting the money back without having to send the shoes back. Yeah, um, yeah, because they'll do that because they don't want that knock on their reputation. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, no, 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 no. You, but like, my thing is, uh, is I, I'm still so stupid. I do this every time. I've been ordering shoes from AliExpress for a few years now. Right. Uh, they usually only last a month. Really? Two months. Yeah. Um, Man, well, three, like months, three, three months, three months, three months, three months. <laughs> but the last shoes I bought, uh-huh. the last shoes I bought, I've got some cool winter shoes with the velvet in inline. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's really nice that, that uh, um, what's the word, word I'm looking for? Is is that, that the stuff they make blankets with. It, but it was nice, so beautiful, nice warm sweet. shoes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, fleece. Fleece. There were fleece lining, fleece linings. Um, uh, I just, I was walking, I was on the subway and I just, I just felt something on, uh, something, I've, there's a sound when I was walking, uh-huh. like I was tapping okay. when I was walking. And then I sat on the subway and I look and the heel was peeling off of the shoe. <laughs> less than a month, less than a month. Uh, I've see. been walking, I've used, I've other shoes I bought on AliExpress. They just exploded while I was walking. Seriously. <laughs> Like the, the the soul shattered. <laughs> <laughs> I've bought a couple of pairs and they worked out pretty well. Like they cost me twenty dollars, I think, and I've yeah. had them for two years. To be honest, and that's my like, justification for buying them. Is yeah. they're just twenty bucks. Yeah. So I mean, if 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 a pair of sh- those kind of shoes last you for a year, I think you got your money's worth, man. <laughs> oh yeah, but for <laughs> yeah. me, it's like if they, if they only last for like two months, I still got my money's worth. <laughs> yeah. It's like a good night of drinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> 20 bucks is not that bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's funny. So that, 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 but anyway, yeah, my AliExpress addiction. I mean, I get good stuff from AliExpress. Uh, a lot of my, my whole studio is from AliExpress. But um, You mean the uh, background here? Uh, just everything, my microphone, my cameras, my my lights. I have, I have studio lights. and. What's your mic? It's a Samsung. I don't, don't ask me the numbers. I'm... I'm not a tech guy right. as in i'm not i'm not the guy that gets on there you know i hate the camera guys uh-huh. i was like oh, what kind of lens do you have they always they always wanted to talk about all the, the numbers <laughs> yeah right yeah you know, what's the what's the what's the aperture on that one uh what, what's the millimeters and, it, and i'm like i don't care it's a freaking macro lens it does macro things yeah right uh, they're always like my... everyone's like what type of equipment do you have i'm like i <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just for for microphones, it's important. Like I, when I was using my laptop uh, speakers only or my mm, laptop microphone only, the sound was horrible. So I, yeah. I upgraded to this tiny little lapel clip on that cost me about four dollars from AliExpress, and <laughs> b- but I would like to get something a bit more. I have a decent lapel. I have a decent yeah, yeah. lavalier on from from AliExpress. Yeah, what I just suggest to people is, and I suggest to my my podcast co-host on dark side because mm. uh, he needed a new microphone i said just just research condenser microphones mm. find one in your price range look look for youtube reviews on it where they actually demonstrate the audio yeah. audio works for you go ahead and buy it it, right. it doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter i'm brand agnostic i don't care what brand it is as long as it works yeah yeah basically basically so the one that i was recommended was so uh I don't know the Blue Yeti. Everybody keeps raving of, about uh, of, Blue? about them. Blue Yeti. Blue Yeti. Blue Yeti, like a Yeti. Oh, Blue Yeti, Yeti. Yeah. Oh, that's been around forever. Yeah, it has been. But I, I've heard good things Blue. about it. Like I know some people who are using them, and yeah. they're they're pretty good. 
I used um, to have blue mics, and and I, I decided just to break away from blue mics and try mm, something new. Mm. Blue mics are expensive. Yeah, you know, compared they are, to, exactly. They compared are. to stuff you get on AliExpress. But yeah, if uh, you're new to the podcast, if you've never been here before, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like button. Uh, get us monetized so I can get a new microphone. <laughs> <laughs> while we talk, while we talk shop about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Like one of the things about the Blue 80s that kind of held me back was beca- the, the the price tag. So um, yeah, me too. I was looking into replacing because I had the Blue Snowball for years, mm. and um, they were starting to crap out because I've had them for like 12 years. Right. Uh, and so yeah, that's why I wanted to look to upgrading my mics. And yeah, that's what it did. It's just I just go online look for a USB condenser. I mean, if you really want to get go up, you can get a, a, a real condenser microphone. But you also have to get a preamp, mm-hmm. which I do have a preamp. I have a Focusrite preamp. Psst. Here I'm talking talking equipment, but uh, um, Mr. But, but but my point is, you can put together a whole studio for less than three hundred dollars. And that right. means everything. That really mean, that means cameras, microphones, uh, lights, backdrops, uh, props, um, in all in mic stands and everything. Yeah, you can you can put it together for 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 less than three hundred dollars. And I was piecing mine together for uh, over the past few years. Yeah, I need to figure out the internet in my house. My wife keeps asking me why I don't do these podcasts at home, and for some strange reason, whenever I get home, the connection is is horrible. Uh, I get better Uh-oh. reception here at at, uh, at work on a Wi-Fi um, than at home. I don't know why. Hmm. Somebody said hmm. some weird parental protection, and I can't even log in, um, plug my computer, my laptop into the uh, in um, uh, what, what you may call it, the wire. I have to do uh, Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi, and it's not working very well. ELT Experience is here. Hello, uh, ELT Experience. New to the podcast? Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, ask Joe some questions. He's got a world of knowledge oh. on ah! anything and everything Korea-related, travel oh. and, and food and all that stuff, man. Ask me anything, I'll make up an answer for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all we're asking for. This is fun. You get to do this. I like to do this. This live thing is kind of fun and scary. Right. Yeah, it's good. I, I like the interaction. I wish there was more people interacting. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm just, wow. Uh, this is cool. Oh, well, uh, what else do you want to know? Well, I'm just looking here um, at your president at Zen Kimchi International, 2004 till present. 16 Going through my years, resume. How, you go through how, resume. Yeah, it is. A, it's a, a very impressive resume. Uh, <laughs> Korea food tours. So how, how did you come yeah. about doing that, the, the Korea food tour? The food tours, well, my first year in Korea, um, we, we my friends and I, we talked about this. We wish there were food tours in Korea. I think a lot of – there's something that was badly missing because uh, you, you've eaten here by yourself. It's really – it's a different type of uh, – A, the restaurant culture is very different. People don't know how to – how things are done. Mm. There's, there's a lot of little ways of the, the easy. It's easy to make faux pas in restaurants. Right. Uh, and also a lot of people just don't know what the food, good food to eat. Uh, you know, I heard people complain, Oh, I don't like some gapsal because it doesn't taste like anything. And I'm like, well, did you put samjang on it or anything? Like, Oh, you're supposed to do that. I thought you're supposed to eat off the grill. I'm like, no. Or they'll say that they didn't like, um, you know, the beef soups or the samgye tongs because they tasted too bland. I'm like, well, did you put salt in there? Like, there's you know, just salt on the table. They didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So um, I wanted to do food tiers for years. But, um, of course, it was hard to open a business without the proper visa. And finally, uh, uh, my, my my girlfriend was happy enough to marry – was good enough to marry me and get me a visa. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and so uh, finally, I started going. Decided to go after a while, trying to figure things out. And uh, I went into bit. Decided to go into business. I uh, uh, took a course. Soul City uh, has been very supportive. They they ran a business course for foreigners. And at the end of the business course, we got to do like a Shark Tank style tryouts mm. to earn um, incubation offices. And so uh, I did that and. I, I won an incubation office at the uh, Seoul Global Center, and got myself a good, good, uh, good start. Uh, good with lots of support, and we started the the tours that year, in 2012. 
Um, and mostly it was me just trying to, I was trying to just find niches that I like, that were my passions that no one was covering. This is the pattern of everything I do. It's like, it's a, something that no one else is doing that I really passionate about. So the, the food tours are one thing, but I also was like, I miss, I love, I love like Halloween and haunted houses and 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 I love I love Korean history, but I don't like that sterilized Korean history you see when you're at tourist trap tourist mm. sites. Mm. Um, and so I started developing the Dark Side of Seoul uh, Ghost Walk, and that was covering a niche. No one, no one had done dark tourism here. You know, like Jack the Ripper tours or right, anything. Right. Like that. You know, there's nothing like that here. And uh, I was really – it was frustrating to see people come to Korea and leave and not know anything about the history aside from the Korean War and that King Sejong made everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I wanted I wanted them to, to really get a passion – share my passion for Korean history. And it, it always feels so good when, when after a tour I get an email from a former guest and they ask me for like suggestions for books, history books to mm -hmm. order. And that just gets me so excited. And and uh, Dark Side has become its own thing. Dark Side has become, we have our own f a website, Facebook page. Um, Facebook page is very active. We have, um, uh, we run watch parties, live watch parties of horror films, classic mm -hmm. horror films, uh, with the chat just like this, like chat live chat room. Yeah. Hey, oh, thanks, ELT, for subscribing to Zinkipchi. Awesome. <laughs> um, but we run, we run these. It's really fun as you watch a classic horror movie, uh, even some more modern ones. Uh, I say modern, like stuff made in the eighties. Um, and and everyone hangs out in the chat room and eat. And uh, we also have a. Uh, uh, what's fun is is we made this chat bot, and all of us kept working on it together. We, I was trying to teach myself AI programming. And I was using a chat bot. So we created this chat bot called Minji the Ghost. Mm -hmm. And she's like this mischievous teenage ghost uh, that will talk to you. If you go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash dark side of soul, uh, and you message us, you won't talk to us. You will talk to Minji the Ghost. And uh, uh, she's quite mischievous. You can ask her almost anything, and you'd be surprised at the answers she gives you. <laughs> because because she's been learning. She's, she's actually learned. The more you talk to her, the more she learns. Mm. So she's been learning new responses, and she surprises me, the stuff she says. She's gotten so realistic that I've seen people ask ask her for marriage, ask to, ask to marry her. Seriously? Yeah. So they, they think she's real, and they're like, I want to meet you in person, <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, ELT Experience was asking, uh, uh, thanks for subscribing. Uh, <laughs> any advice for finding a teaching job with a uni in Korea? Um, well, wow, that's not my ball. I know who to talk to about that. Yeah, um, I've I've taught at three universities, uh, and my first uni job was in 2010. And back then, you needed. Uh, let me see if I got this right. Uh, you, you needed to have a master's degree. Yeah, you need an advanced and, degree for it. Yeah, and two years of uh, academic teaching experience. Or a bachelor's degree with, uh, with I think three or four years of teaching experience at like a, at least a high school level, um, not a hug one. So in a yeah. public school. So right now I don't know what it's like, but it's things have changed in Korea. It's not as easy, but um, you will definitely need an MA. Uh, I think to get a, a teaching position without without an MA with just a BA is probably virtually impossible extremely difficult i got yeah. a, i got a friend of mine who had uh, two friends who've had bas that have gotten uni jobs but the one who just got it i think a year or two ago i mean he's been teaching in korea he's been in korea longer than i have it took him a long time to get to this level and mm. uh but he loves it once he once you get that uni job uh he, he pretty much loved it uh yeah for me it's personally, decent. like it was really good. Um, I love decent the vacation. pay. The, the schedule's good. Yeah, the vacation's well, the, good. Yeah, the pay is so so. Uh, it depends where you where you live, I think, regionally. But it varies mm -hmm. from anywhere from like two point three to two point eight, or maybe three point something million one per month. Yeah. Unless you have a PhD, in which case, obviously, you fall under a different category of you know of of, uh, of an educator. You're not an English teacher. You probably would be teaching in your department. Not uh, just ESL. 
So, um, and, and in this case, your pay would be a lot better. But if you're just uh, an instructor, an English instructor, then you're looking at like maybe 2.67, maybe 8 at max. Yeah. Um, well, which is okay yeah, well, with your single well, guy. Well, ELT the looks like, ELT has just, uh, just told us uh, his background. And yeah, I think you qualify pretty easily yeah. to get a job. Uh, like... they, they start hiring, they start sending out, uh, in November is the hiring time. Am I correct? Yeah. So start hunting out for them around then. Uh, you got I think you got to go to the websites themselves to look for them. I really to the individual. Uh, you can go to da there's Dave ZSL. Uh, they always he's got a, a bunch of. Posts. Oh, he does, and, huh? Oh, yeah, he, does, yeah. he does university gigs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. That's basically where you can find most of them. For some reason, uh, all the like hug ones and university uh, gigs are always easily found on Dave, Dave ZSL. Um, yeah. Other ones like specifically to universities or specifically to hug ones. But Dave ZSL will always have... Um, the only thing that I found with Dave ZSL is that it's just, you know, a mishmash of everything. And you have to basically siphon through the list of everything um, and just look for the uni jobs. But there is the, a lot of them. The only thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing. So I guess if there's like, I don't know, there are other websites that have like specific... There are specific... Have posting, posting specifically to university... Uh, universities only, so I guess I would yeah. guess I'm pretty I I'm not sure. I'm bet you there's a Facebook group all on how to get uni oh, jobs. There are, there um, are. Uh, well, there is. I think um, university those are more professors focused. in Korea. Yeah, Facebook group. What I do, what I do is after school work, mm. um, which for a bachelor's degree. But that for after school, you have to have an F series visa. Um, for after school and. Yeah, yeah, after school. Well, yeah, after school. Technically, you do right. <laughs> and it pays. It pays. It pays quite well, and you don't work that much. Yeah. And so it's, it's good if you want, if you want the the university hours. And of course, you don't get the giant vacations, but you do get government vacations. Yeah, they're still better than hagwon vacations. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's better than working for a hagwon. Hagwon vacation. So much better. Low. We did, uh, uh, last hagwon I worked for no vacation. Don't work for a hagwon. Just start your own. Uh, and if you're interested in starting your own <laughs> hagwon, just hit me up. I'll help you set up your own hagwon here. We've got a very Ow. good franchise running, <laughs> and we'll. It's a turnkey business, man. We've got all the stuff. All you need is uh, just me to help you plug it in, turn it, and run it, man. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Good feedback. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dave has finally upgraded his website. Uh, it's 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 higher than 1999. <laughs> uh, it reminds me if you ever watched the old Homestar Runner Flash cartoons. Um, there's a character Strong Bad, and he was always answering his emails on this really outdated computer. Uh -huh. And every now and then he'd upgrade his computer, but it was still like ten years, at least ten years out of date. That's how Dave's always feels like. It's like he upgrades, but it still feels. Yeah, yeah, it does. You're right. Yeah, it feels like it should belong in the Internet Museum. Yeah, sometimes, occasionally, like when I go and search through it, it does feel like he's not really taking care of it. <laughs> not a lot he's, he's got other things to do i mean he makes he makes decent scratch from from the the site um there's a really uh, there's another podcast called ruta bega r-o-o-t a b e g a um does a video podcast with dave himself mm. at his house okay and it's it's a really informative informative uh podcast uh that one episode uh okay. You can finally see the man behind the myth, <laughs> you know. Right. It, right. You see, yeah, I, I've heard. I've heard so many That'd mythical things about Dave Sperling. I actually, I messaged him because uh, I, I dropped him a message on Facebook, and he responded. And I figured, hey, I'm gonna pursue further. I asked him to come on, but he never responded back. So yeah, <laughs> I didn't made, think he would. He, yeah, I would he imagine he's well. a pretty busy guy. <laughs> he did well. He did yeah. well with Dave ZSL. He's made good money from that. Good yeah. man. He did what a lot of us wish we could do. He was one of the first ones to do it. Uh, a few others. I've had friends. A few friends of mine have become millionaires here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh. experiences. He would love to run his own hogwan, dude. When you when you come down here, let me know. Uh, I've, my my hogwan is a, it's a it's a British franchise imported from from uh, uh, a fella who started it in in Japan. It's in eleven different countries. We've got the whole curriculum for hogwans elementary and kindergartens it's literally uh we've got the curriculum books teachers guides and all that stuff so if you're interested in that just give me a buzz yeah. man 
do that. Get yourself settled. Yeah. Get yourself get yourself a place, and then take a see what your 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 loan situation or your funding can be, and yeah, to get that absolutely. all set up. Yeah. We've got, right now we've got yeah. two schools here. Which Research the neighborhood like hell, Research, though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can help you with that as well. There is a lot of uh, a lot of know-hows. So, Dave Sperling. Dave. Yeah. That's I Dave. think. I'm pretty sure that I don't, ESL I can't was like that the guy. first. Uh, that's how I got my first job uh, teaching oh, me in too. Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I got my first job in Korea. Mm. I was definitely, I was all about Korea. I was not not into Japan or anywhere else. I was, it's all Korea for me. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that's a good site. Uh, well, pff, for then, it was good. It was good. It was good. They, they do have a lot of um, uh, forums on Dave ZSL. And to be honest, I've never really taken advantage of any of them. <laughs> See, the, before Facebook, that was the thing. And uh, that okay. was... The, if you're familiar with the, the Facebook group Oink, yeah. that was Oink before there was Oink. <laughs> it was nasty. It was the the high of scum and villainy. <laughs> was in fact there there's there's a book there's a private Facebook group out there. Some like former posters to Dave ZSL Cafe, yeah. and it's it's filled with a lot of the prominent people that were on there back in the day. Um, it was it was quite it was quite a mess. That 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 site, mm. um, I started avoiding because once once my blog started going up, uh, uh, I think there were entire threads, there were entire like blocks that were just dedicated to trashing me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amusing to hear all the conspiracy theories people had about me. What conspiracy it, theories were they? I'm uh, trying to remember them all, but it was, um, oh gosh, um. I mean, things like I was I was being paid by the Korean government to do all this stuff. Really? Uh huh. And I was I was living high on the hog, and um, uh, uh, yeah, just just a lot of weird stuff. Uh, and it got me realizing, like, wow. I mean, this is how rumors come about. This is how conspiracy theories come about. Sure. When you're, sure. When you're the topic of a conspiracy theory. It really opens your eyes. It makes you way more skeptical of all the conspiracy theories that are out there. <laughs> you see how easily they can be invented. Yeah, work, uh, and, work and Play is another one. Uh, ELT Experience says Work and Play is another good website. They've uh, been around forever. Yeah, too. they have been. Yeah, they're I know good. there's a bunch they're of them. Probably like whack of them went under over the the, the past decade as well. But uh, yeah, there's a Waygook W A Y J O G O O K. Hmm. Well, I, I got a bunch of them still on my bookmarks, and and there's a lot of Facebook groups. And these days, I get my my postings. I get I mostly get them my information from Facebook groups. Yeah, there is one. I think uh, ex. What is it? University professors, teachers, and university professors, or something like that in Korea. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a whistleblower on Dave's. Whistleblower on Dave's. <laughs> I was I was Zen Pickle. I was Zen Pickle. That's the limbs. Yeah. Back in the day, uh, back in the day, oh, that was nuts. That was nuts. Um, so what else do we do here? Um, well, we're, we're gonna help you with. Usually, usually the podcast is about an hour. Um, so oh, think, it's an hour already. Yeah, like time flies, man. An, an hour is short. We could probably go on and on. Um, just ramble about random stuff. But I gotta wrap up as well, man. I gotta Don't send in me reports. To do that. You gotta go home. <laughs> I gotta send in reports. My wife's yeah. probably sleeping already. I gotta send in reports. I'm gonna get in freaking hot water because I, I think I was supposed to send them in by 11, uh, and I oh, tweeted until. Uh, Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oops. We're in trouble. Yeah. So. But yeah. Well, this was fantastic, man. Joe, thanks That's for agreeing time. to do this. Thank you. It was much fun. Much yeah, fun. Likewise. This is a fun show. I think I'm going to become I'm going to become a regular viewer. So yeah, this is you, great. You should become a regular host as well. Oh, right? oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't hit subscribe. Here we go. And now I'm subscribed. All right. <laughs> Do subscribe. Uh, I, I posted subscribe. I posted Joe's website, Zen Kimchi, underneath the link. Um, yeah, as if you've so many, never heard of it before. <laughs> so many projects. Zenkimchi.com, yeah. KoreaFoodTours.com, Dark Side of Soul. Can you find uh, all those links I, through your Zen Kimchi website? Soul Podcast. Um, you know what? I should update Zen Kimchi to yeah, you totally should, uh, like, the Soul you know. Podcast. 
now that it's been revived, I've been cleaning up the old website. What do you getting run a broadcast through? Do you run it through? Like, how do you uh, run broadcast on? Much it's, blah, blah, blah. We're using Buzz. Okay, this is talking shop. We're using Buzz Sprout to host the shows. Okay. I used to host. I was hosting them on my server and doing everything myself. But like with the blog, I decided uh, let's do a service that's dedicated. Let's pay for a service that's dedicated to this. Uh. Thankfully, our Patreon, we got enough people, uh, subscribers on our Patreon to, to fund that. And, and we're getting enough that we're actually adding more stuff. Um, more, more, more stuff. And anyway, soulpodcast.com. Um, tomorrow, we're having a premiere. We're interviewing Jeffrey Kane, who just came out with the book Samsung Rising. We talk about um, Samsung. Uh, no, man. Oh, my God. God, the history of Samsung is effed up. Is that right? It's so it's it's a cult. It is <laughs> like you're reading about a cult, and and there's 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 drugs and sex and murder. Well, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. That's probably most of the conglomerates, man. You probably no, find something it's, like that it's in them. Also, the history of Korea. It's just beautiful. <laughs> it's just like it's just like reading about a chosen dynasty king. <laughs> it's just so. It's it's. Uh, Shakespearean. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hear this. Uh, yeah. It it's good. It, it it premieres tomorrow evening on YouTube and Facebook, and and also if you go to soulpodcast dot com. You could actually, uh, if you subscribe, you could actually download a preview of the episode uh, on audio. Yeah, cool. so that's what I'm working on. We're working on my podcast, getting them going while the tour business is busy kind going, of. Man. I mean, we're doing the we are doing the dark side tours still. We we, we reopened them. Uh, now social distancing distancing has been relaxed and it's an outdoor tour so it's safe yeah um, that's good I'm, I'm hoping to do to do that as well man be become like right now I'm still in the teaching world I am teaching full-time here and just do YouTube and everything else part-time and I kind of hope to switch that become a bit more of a manager um, in, in my my hog one business a less of good, a teacher it's good to have goals it's good to yeah. have goals and outlets because you need those yeah and then and then work more on, on youtube and, and the podcasting and stuff because i'm really yeah. enjoying that man it's a lot of fun uh and if i don't have to... an outlet you become one of those negative people on oink yeah who just, right. who just hates everything <laughs> and oh, hates man, my my somebody somebody suggested that uh they to post my last video the the five things i i don't like about korea on oink and man it got a bashing but also got a lot of views so that's good <laughs> yeah good on you <laughs> It was fun. There was some very deconstructive criticism, man. Like the video got bashed. Do hard. do do a video about Oink and see how what see what happens. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Actually, that's that is bad. not a bad Cause idea. Because I actually I actually know I'm friends with the creators in the of <laughs> Oink. <laughs> and Maybe not the Oink himself, but the the people. No, no, Oink. the creators are good people. It's <laughs> just oh, I wouldn't you know. It's just it's just like Dave. Dave Sperling's a good person. It's just. Sure. It's followers. It's like any religious leader. Their followers are messed up. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's it's fun to have you talking. Yeah, uh, absolutely. No, no harm. Don't in apologize. Don't apologize. And I gotta <laughs> say, surprisingly, today the feed is just phenomenal, man. Uh, I don't know if it is like if it's if it's your connection, but um, usually the, there there's is a bit one of. One person I recognized. Stuttering. Where in the in the chat? Yeah, one person I recognized in the chat. Yourself? No, Ron. Ron. Neil. Ron Pusa. works. Ron, Ron. Ron's the big guy over at TBSE FM. Oh, okay. Ron, where is Ron? Ron is at the top. At the very top. He came in early, saw that it was me, and he left. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, forget that guy. <laughs> ah, there you go. Ron Chang. You can tell Joe eats a lot of Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I do like the Sunday. No, yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it that much. No. Mm -hmm. Um, chop sauce Sunday, I love the, the not the not the stuff with the glass noodles inside. It tastes like a rubber ball. Yeah, right. Um, the stuff the with stuff, the meat inside. The stuff with actual with me, this made with fresh rice. Mm -hmm. It tastes like it tastes like meatloaf. To me, it's like it's like a it's like a proper Blutefest. Yeah, it tastes like a blood sausage. Yeah, it's yeah, that's the one wonderful. I like as well. There is a restaurant yeah. like that in Masan that serves only that. They've got like just sundae dishes with with uh, exactly that. It's just meaty and it's more of a European type blood sausage. Yeah, 
There's uh, a chain the a chain called Shiniju. Shiniju. Yeah, maybe that was it. I don't remember. There's none. I haven't seen them in Ulsan, but uh, we used to live in Masan, and so they had those there. And those yeah, were really that. good. Yeah. It's really good. Uh, okay. Uh, let's close shop. All right. <laughs> All right. It's been an hour. I'm sure you got stuff to do. No, it was no, great having you here, Joe. Yeah, you, yeah, it was great being here. Yeah, let's let's stay in touch, man. I'll I'll message you again, and uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see if we can. If if you can use me for something. <laughs> I'll figure out a way to use you, buddy. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay. <laughs> uh, All right, take care. Bye. Right, take care. Bye bye. All Ooh. right, so. Joe is gone. This was a fantastic chat. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, if you're new here, if you haven't seen this before, this particular podcast or been to the channel, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video. Uh, I think this was a fantastic chat and uh, uh, thanks to Joe again for coming on, agreeing to do this. Um, and make sure to come back uh, next week for another podcast. I don't know who it's going to be with. I don't know what's going to be on the podcast. I haven't really planned that far ahead. My life is, life is kind of a... Um, thanks, Raccoon. It uh, uh, was great to listen last five minutes. <laughs> Nikki, you can tune in and, uh, and, and basically check out the podcast, me talking with a legend here uh, of broadcasters in South Korea. Very cool to talk to him. Um, I, I'm aiming to upload another video on Wednesday. I haven't uploaded anything last week and I hope I don't slip into the thing that Joe was talking about, you know, like you skip one day and another day and before you know it, you're not doing anything. Uh, so I've got two videos on the back burner. Um, they're kind of subdued, not subdued, but, uh, you know, docile, quiet videos. Um, and uh, so those, that's coming up on Wednesday, uh, hopefully, and then another podcast next Monday which should be interesting. I don't know. I hope to get somebody on uh, and, and have, you know, another good conversation. So yeah, uh, that's it from the Korea podcast today uh, on Monday, the 27th of April. Um, I wish you all a very wonderful evening and a great rest of the week. And I will see you next time. Good night. Good night, Korea. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>